No, this is not a drill. Notion finally works offline. This has got to be one of the most sought after features, not only of Notion, but any SaaS product in recent years. So much so that it's even become its own meme. But is it any good? Well, in this video, I'll show you everything that you need to know about Notion's offline feature. I'll show you how it works, some of its current limitations, and some best practices to bear in mind when using Notion offline. So let's dive in. So here are the big headlines, and then we'll dive into everything in a bit more detail later. The first is that Notion offline is not for your entire workspace. Just to begin with, Notion is using offline for single pages. Just as a quick example, one of the ways you can decide which of your pages are offline is if we were to come to my page here about sponsorship info, I come to these three dots and then I can choose available offline by toggling this here. And now this page will be available offline. The second thing is that databases are supported offline, but with some limitations. And that is that you currently can't have the entire database be offline. Only the first 50 pages within an inline database will be downloaded by Notion. So if I was to decide that I wanted to make my client's projects database available offline, I could come here and mark it off as available offline, but only the first 50 pages or 50 rows within this database in this view will be available. And then the third thing is that sync works in the background. Notion automatically syncs any of your offline edits with your teammate edits so that when you're back online, you don't lose any work. So now let's dive a little bit deeper into each of the core features of Notion offline. So the first feature is downloading pages manually. And we've already shown you an example of this, but just again, let's say that I am about to board a flight and I wanna keep all of this information inside of Notion, but I might not have internet. What I can do is come to this page here, come to these three dots, and then I can make this available offline. You'll see a little box will appear and it will show me that the download has been completed. And now when I can go offline, I'll make sure I'll be able to access this page. The great thing is that Notion allows you to download unlimited pages for offline use, no matter if you're on the free plan, the plus plan, the enterprise plan, you can download as many pages as you like. Just as a final example here, let's say you're a business and you need to do a shoot out in the country where you're not gonna have much internet. Well, you can see I have this shot list that's inside of my docs database. And so I can come again to these three dots, make this available offline. And now for the entire shoot day, when I'm out in the field, I can use my mobile and still access all of this information. The second feature is that Notion can also sync your favorites and your recents. So let's say instead of actually coming to these three dots here and checking available offline, I could just have favorited this particular item to my favorites because I wanted to have it ready to hand. And just by doing that, if I quickly turn my Wi-Fi off here, you see Notion will now notify me that it's working offline and I can see in my sidebar, some of the pages have been grayed out, but because I favorited this particular page, it's available for me to access. The same is true of my recents. So if I come to the search, I can see anything that I've visited in the last week or today, or if I come to home, it will show me my recently visited here as well. And then again, if I turn this offline, Notion will start working offline and we can see from this symbol here in the corner. And now this uh, tag has changed from recently visited to offline pages. And as, I can, as you can see, all of these pages here, I can come and look at including the sponsorship info, which I recently visited as well. Now this feature is only available to paid plans. So if you have a plus business or enterprise plan, and this is only going to uh, work for your top 20 favorite pages and your top 20 recent pages. Feature number three is database support. And as I showed earlier, if you mark a database as offline, the first 50 rows in that database will be made available. Where I think this is particularly useful is if you have a home page or a dashboard page where you link to lots of databases that you often use, you can mark this as available offline and then you can sort of use the majority of that database. So here I have my founder HQ, which is sort of my personal hub and I can come to here and make this available offline. And then again, if I switch my Wi-Fi off for a second, now Notion is switched to offline and now you can see 
I have multiple of my databases here linked. So here I've got my task database. I can see in my today view, I can see those two tasks. So I could still um, work with those tasks that I've set for myself and mark things off as I need to. Um, if I go across the other views, um, it depends uh, how many of those 50 pages have been loaded. Um, so for example, if I come to my done view, you'll notice that some of these have been grayed out. And that's because that they were not the first 50 pages um, within the first view of the database. So it normally works by the first view of the database, whether that's an inline database or a linked view of a database. Um, so for example, in this particular context, having my today view be the first view is really helpful because if I was out on the field or if I was offline, those are gonna be the tasks that are most important for me to be able to access. Again, if we come to the projects, we can see this is the first view and it's downloaded all 50 pages here or less than 50 pages. Um, and if I go across any of those pages that were downloaded may be accessible to these other views. But again, I'm sure if we go to completed, this wasn't in the first view, so I'm not able to see a lot of these um, projects. Now, one thing to bear in mind is even if you do switch on uh, available offline for any of these databases, if you go to a particular database page and you have a sub page within that page, um, that will not be available. So as you can see here, I've got this sub page example and it's grayed out and I'm not able to click through into it um, because it's currently not a feature for offline. Feature number four is that you can create, edit and view Notion pages offline. So for me, I think this is a big one because it now means if I'm offline, like I currently am, my Wi-Fi has been switched off inside of any page or um, team space but for example in my private section if i have an idea that comes to me and i'm offline i can still come add a new page make this an empty page and i can capture that idea here and i can add any details within the page and know that this page itself is being downloaded and made available once it comes online you can also edit pages that are offline and those edits will be saved and then added back once you become online again. So for example, if you're working in a team and here I have my docs database and I have my team weekly meeting, well, let's say I'm currently on a flight, but I still wanna prep for the uh, weekly meeting. I can come in here and add any of these notes. And then when I am back online, these notes will be merged with any team edits. And so this will still be a working document that I can work on offline. And the fifth and final feature is that you can manage offline pages with Notion's new offline section in their settings. So in the sidebar, if I come down to the settings, you'll now see under my account, I have offline. So the first thing is if you are on a paid plan, you can choose to switch on automatic downloads. So that will be when you have your recents and your favorites automatically downloaded. And then here we have this offline pages, and this is basically where you can check which pages have been downloaded before you go essentially offline. Um, Notion has this nice search function, so you can actually search by name for the different pages um, and see them all here. And then what you can also do is look at all pages, pages that you have downloaded. So that'll be the ones that you've manually toggled on and off. And then also the ones that are downloaded by Notion. Again, the ones that have been automatically downloaded from your recents and your favorites. So I think the main purpose of this feature is just being able to keep track of those automatic downloads to ensure you definitely have got that page ready for offline. So now you've seen all the features, let's talk about some of the current limitations with using Notion offline. The first one is that you can't use Notion offline on your browser. You can use it using Notion's uh, desktop app or with the ISO and the Android app, but not inside of your browser. The second thing is that some of Notion's more advanced features aren't available offline. Now I'll put up on screen what's currently showing here, which is a quick table of what does work offline, what doesn't work offline. But just as some examples, your file uploads uh, won't work. Um, referencing other databases in relations and rollups won't work. Um, sub items in databases won't work. Uh, so it's really just your pages, your sub pages, your database pages, and being able to make uh, basic edits in them. So just to show you what this may look like for those advanced features, in my content projects, I currently have the current video I'm filming available offline. 
Um, and as you can see, I can actually see the image in the preview, which is nice. Um, and also here in the thumbnail, I can somewhat see them, but because it is a file upload, um, when I try to click into the property, I can't actually access that property. Um, so that's a current limitation, but something that does work is the comments. So if I wanted to uh, write back to my editor here, I could add a little comment, post that, and then when I'm back online, that would be sent to my editor. And finally, as we spoke about, there are some limitations between the different plans inside of Notion. If you have a free account, you'll be able to download unlimited Notion pages for free using the uh, toggle. But apart from that, you won't be able to do anything else. With all of the other paid plans, you'll be able to have unlimited downloaded pages, and then also you get access to the automatic downloads via the recents and the favorites. So we've spoken about what the core features are and some of the current limitations. Let's finally talk about some best practices when you next start to use Notion offline. So before you go offline, you'll first want to identify the pages you want to have available to you offline. And you would either go individually into those pages and mark them off as offline. Or what I'll be doing is just coming to my settings, coming to offline, and then just searching for the pages that I want to make sure if I have them. If there's something that I know that I'll be working on that I can't currently see in here, I'll just go back to that page and manually mark it off as offline. The second thing you'll want to check is if you're using multiple devices, currently Notion doesn't sync between your devices. So as an example, if I had marked this London Gatwick to NYC flight information on my desktop app, that doesn't mean that it's offline on my mobile app. And I think this is what's going to trip a lot of people up. So if you are going to be using this information on your phone, which in this context, I probably would, you wanna make sure on your phone, you come to the three dots here and that you mark this off as available offline as well. And so now this will be accessible on your phone. And then the final thing I would check is if I am using any databases and there are any sub pages within those databases that I need available. Again, I'll need to make sure I manually turn these on if I want to be able to access them. So while you're offline, what are some best practices? Well, because of its current limitations, what I'll currently be doing is just basic edits. So as I showed earlier, a good example would be if you had a team meeting that you're prepping for and it just has basic blocks inside of there, then this would be nice to use offline. I would avoid anything that's going to be using an advanced block. So again, if I needed to upload any files, I won't be able to do that. If for example, I have any of my AI blocks in here that need to uh, use generation, normally that won't be working either. So I'll avoid the advanced stuff and just use it for basic edits. And then finally, when you're back online, Notion automatically syncs edits. Uh, when you do go online, which will include merging offline edits with your teammates' edits. What Notion is also encouraging is to try to reconnect to Wi-Fi as regularly as you can. They've said users who go offline for extended periods and are doing lots of edits, an extended period would be around 30 days, they may experience some data loss due to current limitations. So what do you think? Are you gonna start using Notion offline? I'd love to hear in the comments where this will be most useful in your personal and business workflows. If this video has got you thinking that you might like to start using Notion for your business, you should check out this video here. It's my ultimate Notion setup for service-based businesses. I'll see you there.